All right, what's up guys? Hope you're having an awesome day. We're working on the stove for the shop today. Corey got a couple of barrels and a kit to turn this into a double barrel stove. You got some piping over there? That's for the upper one? Yeah, that's for the, we're gonna put a heat exchanger in the upper barrel to push some more air through. Be a little bit more efficient. As much heat as we can out of it because the stove we have right now is not quite efficient for this big of a building. Yeah, he's getting the cord all ready. This didn't have a cord on this chop saw, so getting the cord put on so we'll be able to cut the piping for the barrels. And then we need to start drilling the holes. And we got some packages here that are, is a kit? Is a kit you got off Amazon for it? Yeah, it's just called a barrel <laughs> stove kit. It's a, gives you a door in the couplers for your stove pipe. Sweet. So we'll open that here in a second and show you what we got. And we'll, if you're interested in doing this, we'll drop a link down in the description so you can check that out on Amazon and get that if you want. So here in a second, we'll open that up. All right, let's open this up, Corey, and see what we got. That out of the way. Guess I should come over here. I'm gonna assume this probably is a little probably bit better light. the kit to connect two barrels. So you do have to buy two kits. <clears throat> this is a double barrel adapter, which just gave, basically gives you the two cast iron legs to <clears throat> put the barrels together. Seems like it's that's nice. How much was this kit? I believe the whole total is 80 bucks. The door kit's 50, and this is only like 20 bucks. That's not bad. It comes with your pieces like attached to the barrel for your stovepipe. And those then, would be these pieces right here, yeah. and then there for the chimney. And then it comes with these cast iron mounts for the bottom and top barrel. Those yeah. just hold the barrels right there. Yep. They form around it. <clears throat> Comes with a bag of hardware, so that's already a good sign. It's a pretty nice kit. Yeah, it seems it like should the, hold up fine. It seems like the quality is there. The camp stove kit. Oh, in. look at that. It's got a fancy logo on the front. This should be the door vent. We should have. Uh, the legs for the bottom barrel. We should grind this off and put an overtime garage logo on it. What do you think? <clears throat> Yeah, I'm down if I want to do it. Are you going to build a... It's pretty nice. ...fit your wood through the hole? Yes. <clears throat> Perfect. Comes with a dampener. It'll be going on the top barrel. Unless you're using a single barrel, you put it on the top on your bottom barrel. And then it comes with the legs for the bottom and a... <laughs> and a bunch bag of, of hardware <laughs> that, came, that came open. A bunch of scattered bolts. Yeah, because you don't shoot it. You know, UPS that. and FedEx are so uh, reliable on keeping their parts. Uh, Is that for that? I'm assuming. So. What does it show on the front? Nothing. Oh, cool. <laughs> well, this shouldn't be too bad. So, oh. like the double barrel, some people will use, uh, I'll show you a better diagram up here. Some people will just do it this way and run just the two barrels, but we're gonna be adding pipes through here and then a fan on the back and that'll help take some of the heat and blow it out out the front. Yeah, it, it works go, a lot better. It should pull a lot of the heat out of the barrel and we should get almost as much as we can out of it. A lot more efficient. Um, efficient wise getting heat out, yeah. Um, the barrel cells aren't exactly the efficient way to burn wood, but when you gotta heat a pretty big area, you can get these really hot and pull a lot of heat off of them. So we're gonna get started. We're gonna do the bottom barrel first. We'll put the legs on, we'll get the door on. Uh, we'll cut a hole for the, the chimney um, to connect the two barrels. And then we'll start on the top one. We'll get all of our pipe cut. We'll start cutting out the holes for it and welding those up in. And then, uh, yeah, we'll just take it step by step. Yeah, this one's got a little dent on it. We'll probably just put that at the bottom so you can't see the bottom and the back. Yeah, well, we do. One thing you do want to do when you do these kits is that you want to make sure that you uh, can utilize the holes. You can use this, this style of barrel or you can use the ones where the, the uh, top has a lid and it comes off already. You can use those. Those do make the ease of access of bolting the legs on a little bit better, but um, we'll just cut our door first and that'll allow us access on the inside and then when we get to the back leg 
we'll cut our chimney hole and then we'll be able to reach through that and uh, get those bolted in. But yeah. We're going to uh, get started with this. We're going to mark our door and probably cut it out. All right, sweet. Let's get started doing that and see where we end up. So, All right, so Corey's getting ready to cut this. He's got it all marked up. What would you do to get this marked, Corey? Uh, so basically, you put the door on here. I just outlined the inside hole where to cut out for uh, the main hole. Then I outlined the outside also just to keep track of where everything's at. Um, we're just going to be cutting out this middle piece. And this piece down here is for the vent that we'll cut out. Um, Has a little notch here on the back side. That little screw that you gotta, that's what you're cutting that out for so it can slide. Back yeah, and just forth. get more, more air. And I guess too. vent it. Yeah. And then we can also use this for probably put like a spring valve or something on it for uh, an extra vent because I don't know if this is gonna be quite enough airflow coming through here, but we'll keep this down here on the bottom just in case for an extra vent. All right, sweet. You're just gonna use a cutoff wheel and cut that yep. out? Yeah, we're just gonna use a cutoff wheel, cut this out as close as we can, and then uh, we'll put the door back on and we'll mark the holes and we'll get it bolted up. All right, sweet. Got it all cut out, Corey? And I have to say, that turned out pretty good for just a cutoff wheel. Looks good enough for what we're doing. What do you think? <sighs> Those are some sweet safety glasses you got. Thank you. I like them, safety first. Yeah, they're a special uh, order you know duck commander ones you know oh yeah remember but, kids always wear your safety glasses can't do nothing with no eyes i, I guess you could recommend safety glasses with grinding or anything I'm yeah a firm believer I'm i've seen too many discs blown apart in people's faces yeah we got this cut out um so we got our main hole got our vent hole done how's it fit <laughs> it's pretty good now we just need to mark the holes yeah, so do a little more cleanup on the edges just so we don't cut ourselves later. Well, once you get it all bolted down, we can go in here with a yeah. flap wheel and clean it up, right? So now let's we'll mark our holes and we'll take an eighth inch drill bit and we'll drill our holes and we'll bolt this up and uh, get ready to put the bottom legs on. So all right, sweet. It. Let's do it. Okay, so we got the door is done. It's all bolted in. Took a grinder and finished uh, these edges a little bit better so they're not sharp. So you don't have to worry about cutting yourself when you're putting wood in. The vent works. The vent hole's cut out. So the door is pretty much done. Um, I already marked and drilled my holes for the legs on the bottom. Um, the easiest way I found to do is put your, put your barrel on your stands and put it pretty much close to these inner ribs here. And then... Uh, then you can clock your barrel to where it's level and where it looks the best. And then I just marked with a punch where the holes were and then lifted it back up and drill, uh, drill the holes for the legs right there. Uh, probably the easiest way to mount them is with the door drilled and in, you'll be able to reach these ones. And then the back ones are gonna be a little more difficult. What I think I'm gonna do is cut the chimney hole out and then uh, that'll give us access to reach to the bottom of the barrel to uh, bolt the, the back legs on. Okay guys, so we got the barrel on the, on the legs. The first one is screwed and bolted together. <clears throat> the back set, uh, set of legs isn't yet. Um, just test fitting the back and we need to cut the chimney hole to get access to it. And then we put the other brackets on for the top barrel. They're just sitting there kind of mocking things up. Um, we have this mocked in place as well. That'll be the coupler for the top barrel that slides over that piece. And then you bolt the top barrel to this. Um, right now we're going to run to Home Depot real quick and, uh, we need to get some brick for the bottom of it and, uh, some other things and then we'll wrap it up and then we'll start our first fire in it to burn all the paint off before we oh, put it inside. So, yeah, we'll probably have to cut this down. I might look for a new, a different one at Home Depot. Uh, it sits a little tall. If we have to cut it down, it's not that big of a deal. Um, other than that, it's going together pretty easy. It should work fine. It should work so. awesome. I think you should just put it inside and then burn off the paint and just see how it works. <laughs> yeah, that's a definitely an idea. It won't be that bad. <clears throat> but the door mounts really easy. It works nice. So we're going to head to Home Depot, right, boys? And food. I'm hungry. And food. All right, we're going to go get some food. Hit up the 
crusty Home Depot and then we'll be back at it. All right, we're back to another update on the stove. The top, the top barrel is on. We got the piece for the chimney to connect the two here. <clears throat> um, a quick little note, these aren't attached yet. Cutting this hole will make it, uh, bolting this a lot easier. Um, and if you cut this before you put the bottom leg on, it also makes it easier to reach the back of the barrel. But now the tricky part is you don't want to get yourself in too big of uh, a pinch. So what you want to do is you want to cut this top uh, hole for your top barrel. And then you're actually going to bolt these legs on first and then do these since you have the front door and this back piece to reach the nuts. So we're going to mock up the top barrel, cut out this part of the um, barrel for the, to connect the two, and we'll get these legs on and we'll check back with you when we get to that point. All right guys, update on the stove. The top barrel is mounted. We did go with a different option. This is the ugly version. Uh, tomorrow I'll probably do it one more last walk around of everything when it's done. I still have to put tubes in, which I have the piping over here on the floor. Uh, it's about 60 foot of uh, um, two inch 065 pipe um, It's relatively pretty cheap to buy this pipe instead of a uh, something bigger like two and a half or three inches The bigger you go the little thicker it has to be it costs more so we want a two inch 065 pipe No need to go any bigger than that. Yeah, it should be plenty to push air through the barrel um, I'll follow up tomorrow after we get most of it in um, so we changed the way we mounted the second, the top barrel to using these angle iron pieces here. Now, the reason why we went with the angle iron is because with the kit that we got, which are these guys right here, they didn't want to sit on the barrels very well and it really makes it a pain to get to the bolts because your top barrel is not going to have a hole except for the one spot for the chimney. Um, it makes it kind of a pain in the ass yeah. to really get to the bolts to Can't get these on the here. Bolts very well. These are um, kind of tapered all funky too. Yeah, they're tapered to fit the barrel, but they're they're not right and they didn't sit well. It was hard to get the barrel level. Um, one of the main things, another reason why we went with this is that we gave this a little more space just because it's a tight um, collector here to connect these two. Um, snug fit. Yeah, it's a pretty snug fit. We uh, had this angle iron laying around the shop and all around it was just an easier option to uh, use these to mount it, get the barrel level and everything because you kind of want it kind of a little as level as possible just for flow reasons. Um, other than that everything went together really well. The door <clears throat> works. We got the fire break in there. You want to lay fire break in the bottom so the coals and stuff don't sit on the barrel because over time it'll weaken it'll weaken the metal um, and basically just burn out the bottom of your barrel and then you'll have to replace it. Uh, good stuff to get yeah i am a little bummed that we couldn't use these just for the fact that um if your barrels do wear out over time if you're using it for a lot of heat you can just simply unbolt it and put a new barrel on um but we do have tools and resources in the shop so we have torches or whatever we can do to yeah we can pick up off. other barrels and change it out if we need relatively but easy. with the fire brick in the bottom it should last quite a while and produce lots of heat so we're going to uh, we're going to start a fire in this. We're going to let it burn, burn all the paint off outside before we plumb plumb it the rest of the way in and put our pipes in tomorrow. And then uh, I'll make an I'll make a quick follow up after we get the pipes in. What we're going to do for a fan and fan shroud to push the air through the pipes to the top barrel. Um, we're just going to weld the pipes straight through this barrel. One thing you can do if you want to go the extra mile to get as much heat out of the top barrel. You can actually cut this barrel in half and plate this side. So you have your main source heat coming down from the bottom up and then you can chamber the half of this and then leave this section up here open and then have more pipe and heat run back through up here and put your chimney um, or your dampener out this way if you want it out the back. I decided not to do that just because the, the amount of work in winter is here already. So I think the piping works. Pretty yeah, good. I think the pipe will work and uh, once we get our fan and fan shroud on the back here Get everything wired up. We'll probably put it on a, a timer switch just so it runs Every you know 30 minutes 60 minutes. We'll probably find a different a, a timer switch at Home Depot, but we're gonna go ahead and fire this up and uh, 
I'll probably do the piping and put that in this video. Do that at all tomorrow and just toss it in. Yeah, and then we'll catch up with you tomorrow after we get um, the whole thing wrapped up, and then that'll be it. From there. So. She's burning. What do you think, Corey? So far, so good. Burn the paint off. Get in there. Good yeah. excuse to have the buds come over and have a couple sodas around the fire. Pop only. Yeah. No alcohols. You need to put some more wood in there so the flames are coming out the top. I don't know if we can get them that big. That's burning pretty good. Getting there. Getting her all heated up. Yeah. That's a little hot. Alright guys, so it's the next day. The stove, uh, we soaked the stove last night and let it burn throughout the night. It burnt most of the paint off. Um, some of the bottom paint didn't really come off because the fire brick really separates the heat. So there's still a little bit of paint on it. We'll probably torch it off. Um, it's all cool. It definitely put out a lot of heat. We were standing around it for a while last night. It puts off a ton of heat. Um, so we're going to clean it up and we're going to get ready to put the pipes in for the vent tubes for the heat exchanger up top and then uh, wrap it up and get it plumbed in and see if we can... Uh, we're going to try it out tonight, see if it'll heat up the shop. So we're going to start working on the pipes. I cut all the pipes last night. Um, the barrels are about 37 and a half inches long um, from ri um, rib to rib. So it'll give us just a little bit of overhang in the middle, enough to weld around, and it should fit around perfect. So uh, we'll get this done, then we'll head to Home Depot, and we'll go get some uh, last-minute things, and we'll get it plumbed in. So I'm going to start working on the pipes now. All right, guys, I'm going to give you a little update. Uh, probably covered in metal dust and everything. Um, getting the pipes put in. Hole saw, horrible idea. I have a shitty-ass hole saw. Wasn't working, so I resorted to the torch. It actually isn't turning too bad. I'm getting the holes pretty damn close, so it's not going to take much to fill them when we weld them up together. But the back's looking a lot better than the front, actually. But <laughs> I'm just sending it. Don't care, it's just gonna have a fan push heat through the pipes. Uh, it's kind of nasty looking on the front. Uh, it's been about, I don't know, an hour and a half getting this done. Only have about six more pipes to do. Uh, I actually did have to run to the local metal shop and I grabbed another 20 foot uh, stick of two inch uh, 065 uh, tubing. Um, it's relatively cheap, I think. So I have a total of 80 feet of pipe in this for the top barrel. Um, you don't exactly need to put this many in there if you don't want you could use really big pipe put two big pipes in there or you don't even have to I'm just doing it for the fact that it um, the shop is a 40 by 60 is 2400 square feet um, it's gonna take a lot to heat so I'm gonna try and suck every ounce of heat that I can get out of this double barrel but we're gonna <clears throat> get to ripping back on this and finish it up so we can plumb it in and start a fire and see how it does all right so we got all the holes cut on the barrel um, they're not perfect, but they're pretty close. Should be easy to weld them up. Um, you don't have to get them s extremely straight as long as they're matching and close enough, it'll work. Uh, just like I said before, you're just pushing air through them. Um, now I got all the pipes back out. I test fitted all of them, they all fit. Um, now it's time to uh, grind the ends of these and clean them up and then grind the barrel, clean up where, the, where I cut. And then uh, once I get all that done, we'll start welding them in, so. All right, guys, so I got I finished grinding uh, the barrel clean. I just finished doing all the pipes. All the ends are smoothed out, all the slag and everything. Cut marks are taken off. I ground the top barrel where all the holes are. Cleaned all those up so that we can put the pipe in and have a good welding surface. The front and back are done. Um, right now, it's kind of in place. We're going to go to Home Depot in a second and uh, get some stove pipe. need a... Get a six to eight inch adapter. We're gonna go straight up to a 90, and then we're gonna run a straight pipe back to a 45 to uh, mate it to the chimney. This is just the extra piece that came off of uh, the stove that was here already. Um, it's coming along pretty good. I'm pretty excited. You? Yeah. Let's go get that stuff, get it done, so I'm gonna try it tonight. It's all right. Cool. Let's motate to Home Depot. All right, guys, we got back from Home Depot. We got all the pieces we need to uh, hook it up later. Um, just got all the pipes in now, getting ready to weld them. Um, got a couple of gaps that are a little bit bigger to fill, but it's not too bad since I cut it with a torch and I'm not rich and have a plasma cutter. And the hole saw I had was a POS and I didn't want to go get another one, so I just improvised and busted the torch out. 
but it's actually pretty dang close. Um, all these pipes are flush on the back because as we're gonna build the shroud for the fan and uh, it doesn't really matter how they're sticking out um, in the front. Most of them are pretty close to cut the same. Um, most of them are pretty close to level. So we're gonna work for a while to weld all these up. All right, so the moment of truth happened. There's a fire going in the stove. Got the pipes all welded up. Didn't take too long. Uh, we did run out of a bottle of gas. We had to go to Justin's and pick his uh, spare up. And we're using this uh, fan right now as a spare just to get air moving through the pipes. Um, turned out really awesome. This is a pretty fun thing to build. Didn't take too much. We got the chimney hooked up uh, the best we could. It's working out actually pretty well. <clears throat> um, for some reason, the door turned white last night from burning it, but we still got to put a handle on here. <clears throat> it is hot, that's for sure. Got a little couple two by fours uh, burning. <clears throat> It's definitely putting out a lot of heat. The yellow jackets are already starting to pop up around the shop. One just landed on me. Um, pretty sure it got stung. That's nice. <clears throat> but uh, that is uh, my vision of a double barrel stove. It seems like it's gonna work a lot. Um, we're gonna give it a chance to warm up. Justin's already taken in the luxury of having a nice heat Dude, it's going nice. on. Yeah. Finally have heat. Yeah, it's gonna be it's nice getting, for this winter. It's been getting pretty cold the past couple of weeks, so. He'll probably be sitting there a lot, you know, because he's cold. <laughs> but we're going to give it a chance, see how, see how it does, and uh, we'll give you guys an update later after we get some wood burnt through it. But everything else is working fine, and that's going to be it for the video. So don't forget to like, uh, share, and subscribe if you want to see anything cool. And stay tuned. We're going to have a Harbor Freight update video on the tools, how they've been working out. Yeah, we're going to do a full review about the tools that he bought. Um... You know, go in depth about everything we like and don't like. I've been using those over at my house. Haven't been using them over here, but they've been working pretty good over there. We'll talk more about that in a separate video, but... All right, well, that's all we got for you guys, so we'll catch you on the next video.